I'm Edie Lash and I'm here inside the Hub Culture studio. It's Davos 2020. Really pleased to be joined by Sarah K. Ellis, President and CEO of GLAAD. Thanks for coming along. Thank you for having us. So tell me, first of all, what GLAAD is. So GLAAD is the largest global LGBTQ advocacy organization. We we're based in the United States, but we work on every continent across the world. Mm -hmm. And our job is to accelerate acceptance for the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. We're over three decades old, so we've been around a minute. So tell me, <laughs> right. <laughs> so tell me, first of all, why an organization like GLAAD is so important. Give me some facts about uh, the inequality and the, the non-inclusion that people that you are supporting face. So, especially in the United States, what you what a lot of people don't know is that you can be fired in half the states, over half the states, for being LGBTQ from your job. Hmm. Um, you could be denied housing. There are right now five bills in Tennessee that are anti-LGBTQ. So what's perceived as equality is actually not very equal still in the United States. And one of the challenges is that, that we face is that people actually don't even understand or know that. Mm. They thought that marriage equality was the finish line, and that was a milestone, but certainly not the finish line. So there's a lot of work to be done. The FBI reported for the third straight in, year in a row in the United States that um, violence is up against the LGBTQ mm. community. So we still are facing a, a tremendous amount of discrimination and violence against our community. And then when you start to look at it globally, it's nearly 70 countries where it's still criminal to be LGBTQ. Wow. Yeah, so there are some staggering numbers out there for the community. Our job is to tell stories about the community, mm. to open hearts and minds, mm. because policy is really important. But what's most important is to change a heart and mind because then we know for sure that someone will be safe, that someone won't be rejected when they come out, mm -hmm. um, and that they will, they will not be fired from their job. So it sounds like what you do is, looking, is look for um, advocates within and partnerships with governments and building stories and understanding with people, but you also work with companies as well because companies are this other way to come in uh, in terms of advocacy. And what we're seeing, of course, if you walk down the promenade in Davos, we see a lot about diversity and inclusion uh, used as taglines for different companies. So tell me about uh, where you see some of those companies that are actually walking the walk mm -hmm. uh, around this and if there's any interesting research you found. So, yes, absolutely. I don't believe in the United States that we would be where we are today without companies mm -hmm. stepping up on inclusion for the LGBTQ community. We want to see them act in, a, in an even more powerful way. And so what we did was we partnered with Procter & Gamble to look at um, how, how does advertising affect acceptance levels for LGBTQ people. Mm -hmm. And what we found was an actual permission slip for companies who are consumer facing that can use their platforms to advocate for the LGBTQ community hmm. just by mere inclusion. And so what we found at the highest level is that people look for it. Non-LGBTQ consumers in America look for that inclusion in ads so that they can understand and become more comfortable. They mm -hmm. want to understand and become more comfortable. And for the companies themselves, when they include LGBTQ people across all these measures of brand halo, how do you think, do you think that this brand respects people? Do you feel more respected by this brand? Would you be more willing to purchase from this brand? 75% and higher people said on all of those indicators in terms of feeling good about the brands. Mm. Um, so there's an enormous opportunity for these global international companies to work in the public sphere in a very positive way. The other thing that we found out is that when you look at, when, this, when people see these ads, we asked in the past three months, have mm -hmm. you seen an LGBTQ person in an advertisement? And they said yes, they were 60% more accepting of LGBTQ people. Mm. If you think about that. That's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. When marriage equality passed in America, it was, we were at 53% of acceptance. Mm. 
So that's pretty, you that's can see. That's the power of brand. It is the power, and, and there's a lot of power here in, in Davos, and so we're trying to access that for the good of our community. I really appreciate you stopping by the Hub Culture Studio to tell me a little bit more about GLAD and look forward to staying in touch. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure. I'm Edie Lush here in Hub Culture in Davos 2020.